A little like a Mai Tai in a tiki bar. In China, coconut chicken hot pot is evocative of the tropics. You've got some Wenchang chicken, coconut water fresh from the fruit, a citrus-laden dip. Wherever in the country you happen to be, the flavor, the decor, it'll teleport you to the southern island of Hainan. With its white sand beaches, its palm trees, its colorful ethnic groups, seashells, sunshine, wide-brim hats, and flowy dresses. You can hear the waves crashing. You can feel the holiday. And much like the Mai Tai, the dish is objectively delicious. Tropical tasting stuff is usually loved for a reason. But as you might know, the Mai Tai was not conceived in Bora Bora. It was invented in Oakland. And what everyone knows of now is Hainan Coconut Chicken Hot Pot. It didn't come from the beaches of Sanya. It came from the special economic zone, the city of Shenzhen. Now, how this pot became a national tropical sensation is in some ways the story of how modern China got connected. Because the inventor was actually Indonesian, a businessman of Hainanese ancestry, something common to see across Southeast Asia. In the 1990s, he opened a hot pot restaurant in Shenzhen, across from the Wenjindu border checkpoint with Hong Kong, in the hopes of attracting business people and weekenders. A common move at the time, given the good transport links and the mainland's cheap rent and labor. That restaurant shtick was a chicken hot pot cooked in coconut water, likely drawing a bit from Mr. Huang's roots. But this was also a time when more and more people in China were beginning to travel about, internationally to Thailand to Malaysia, domestically to places like Hainan. Now enter Huang Regao, a businessman from Maoming that took that idea and ran with it. To their mix, they added some familiar Cantonese soup elements, but at the same time, really leaned into that tropical island vibe. And it's this concept that really exploded. And these days, you can find Shenzhen-style Hainan chicken pot everywhere from Inner Mongolia to, well, Hainan. But a little like we discussed in our hot pot at home video, this might be a restaurant dish, but is a prime contender for home cooking as the tasty to effort ratio is just through the roof. Of course, I know that not everyone's made that hot pot at home jump, but this thing is so tasty and so simple that we also decided to craft an alternative, bit more workaday way to serve it just to cover all our bases. So that really your only potential barrier here is maybe securing a coconut. Cause this dish will work off of a base of two fresh young coconuts. You should be able to find these at many Asian or Latin grocers or maybe a bougie supermarket in some regions. Just strain out the water. We'll be looking for one liter worth and use a spoon to scrape out some of the flesh. We'll want a half cup for our pot. If you can't find young coconut, bottled coconut water, 100% unsweetened of course, isn't as good but is still okay. But maybe do try to find a solution too for that half cup of coconut meat, if at all possible. Then, for the chicken, three routes that you could go. Number one, the Chinese way, which is one whole chicken cleaved into pieces across the bone, something that should also be purchasable at your local Asian supermarket. Route number two, and perhaps easier for the uninitiated, would be to use thighs, preferably bone in. Just slice out the bone and chop the meat into two inch chunks, also perfectly tasty. And three, kind of splitting the two, you could also try cleaving drumsticks, which in China is the cut that beginners tend to learn on. Hold the end, and if you don't cleave through on your first try, it happens, just use force and chop the thing into three or four pieces. And then we can prepare a dipping sauce. Standard for this pot would be something a bit like one clove of minced garlic, an inch of minced ginger, one to two spicy chilies, a sprig of cilantro chopped up, eight teaspoon MSG, half teaspoon sugar, two tablespoons soy sauce, tablespoon half water, and the juice from two calamansi limes or half a kumquat or mandarin for the calamansi list like us. Then just mix well and set aside. 
and then finally to make our pot. Again, there's really not all that much to this, which is probably why it's a pretty good business. 750 grams of your chicken, 16 whole water chestnuts, half an ear of corn cut into three sections, six red dates, an inch of smashed ginger, and the coconut water and flesh. Just bring that all up to a boil. Give it a quick, not obsessive skim. Then add in a teaspoon of goji berry. Cover with the lid ajar and boil it over a medium high flame for eight minutes to cook the chicken. And then after that time, now your hot pot is good to go. Just enjoy with friends that tropical taste of Shenzhen City, the specialist of the economic zones. Now to de potify this thing. Just like any soup can be a pot, any pot can also be a soup. This is a move that you can see in dishes like Suansai fish, which these days is also a pretty common fast food set meal. So then for our set meal, we'll just charge forward with the dip in the same way, plus the pot also in the same way, albeit boiling for 10 minutes in place of eight. Then just transfer that over to a serving bowl. But to complete things, instead of white rice like that Tsuansai Yu, what does go awesome with this is Cantonese clay pot rice, a classic at Runyuan and its imitators. So for this, we'll just be following our previous clay pot rice video practically verbatim, full written recipe of which will be down in the description as well. The general thrust of that video was that we soaked jasmine rice in with hot boiled water for a half an hour, added it to an oiled clay pot, and transitioned to a hot oven after it got to a boil. In that video, we topped it with marinated beef, but with this one, we'll be hitting it with lapchong sausage, and of course, a seasoned soy sauce and blasting it on the stove. It all works really well. This right here is just a fantastic meal for two. Though, in hindsight, maybe it could also use a touch of blanched veg. So, uh, if you don't know how to eat hot pot, remember to check out our hot pot 101 video up here. But, unlike Sichuan hot pot, you don't want to mix in too much other kinds of flavors in it. Uh, so, save your spam or asparagus for other hot pots. But, uh, you can add something like this deep fry uh, tofu skin to absorb that great flavor or something like napa that has some kind of sweet uh, natural sweetness so that it can add on the umami-ness of the pot or just something simple like a fish ball so right check out the recipe for the pot and the soup in the description box and a big thank you for everyone that's supporting us on Patreon and remember to subscribe for more Chinese cooking videos.